And the next guest speaker is from Mexico and specializes in shamanism, specifically that of the Bufo Alvarius toad. Um, Octavia Rettig, everyone. Thank you, Joshua. <clears throat> well, uh, thanks, uh, Josh, and everyone for uh, the presence and the opportunity to share this uh, talk about uh, the work that I've been doing with the toad medicine for the last 12 years. Uh, I'm part of a um, group of medicine men and women that works uh, as part of the um, uh, World Federation of uh, United Nations Associations, in this case uh, from Venezuela. This uh, ONG <clears throat> will be doing work with Ayahuasca or Yajé, Yopo and Cambo for a few years and since 2014 they start adding and supporting the work that, I'm, that, I, that, that I do with the, the Sonoran Desert Toad. <clears throat> Through the last uh, years, I, I've been sharing the, the uh, medicinal and therapeutic effects of, of the Sonoran Desert Toad based mainly in a personal experience. This medicine, it really saved my life. It helped me to shift from the crack. I was a, a crack addict and I was born an, an, as an addict, but my addiction was shifting from sugar to alcohol to sex and video games and sports. And I ended the snorting cocaine and then smoking crack. And I spent two and a half years of my life completely waste. Uh, and I've been the last 10 years with no any uh, necessity to poison myself or intoxicate my body with any kind of synthetic drugs. But I still use in medicines because for me the, um, the search and the, the need to understand better my own nature and the fact that this delusion of the self is just a creation of our own mind and that the self, it doesn't exist. The ego is just has been distracted and get distorted because we lack of a point of focusing our energy globally. Now we can see the, the arising of all the um, conscious ways to treat ourselves and treat our planet and the fact that we are having a crisis, we are having a crossroad and we don't know if we will be able to make it in 50 years or 100 years for all the human beings that exist already in this planet. <clears throat> and not only for the human species, but also for the rest of the species that share this planet with us. So I think that we all are repeating the same mistakes that our lineage and our ancestors uh, made because we are not understanding properly our own history as a species, and we still thinking and acting in a violent way with our, within ourselves and with others. We still allowing the killing and the murdering to happening every day, non-stop, until when? Someone needs to to say something about what is happening every single day in this planet. And we all are sitting, waiting for someone else to do it. And we all have the power. We all have the skills to do it. We, uh, we just shared today uh, how people, how these ideas were generalized and became truths. And these truths are far distant from being real. And we are creating some kind of madness in this world, and we are being co-creators of that. And I didn't realize how sick I was. I didn't realize how sick the education and the society and the culture that I was born uh, is, is so sick, it's so lack of love, it's so double moral 
people say, don't do this, and they are doing it themselves. So for me, trying to understand what spirituality is and how to thrive in this planet was something that was unresolved for many lifetimes until I remember a few years ago that I was already that that I, want, that I wanted to be, that I was looking for. And now it's time to find the others. It's time to say to everybody in this planet that there is no such thing as impossible tasks. If we really commit with something, if we really believe and if we really have the will to accomplish things, I am a living proof that I was told many lies. I was told many times that I couldn't do things or that this is what you should do. And if you do this, then you are wrong and you should be condemned. And you know what? I needed to become completely lost, hopeless, sick, almost dead, to understand the beautiful opportunity that this exist existence has given to me. And we all are the same. We all are one. That for me is not an idealistic talk. This is a feeling that I have inside of my heart because I know and I remember that I am connected with the light, that I am connected with the love, and that I am infinite. This I didn't learn in my education going to the med school. This I didn't understood through the religion or through the society, but this come really easy through the plant medicines, through the earth-based medicines. And this is a physician telling you, hey guys, we are wasting our time. There is so many beautiful treasures in this planet and we are ignoring, we are dismissing because of our own ignorance and because of our own fears. And this needs to come to an end. So, different ways of thinking, different ways of living, and the incomprehension of our own being has brought this world to uh, millions of pieces. Millions of me, me, me trying to become the richest guy, the most famous person, or even the most happier person when we should understand that we are part of a higher living organism. And the education that we receive was to create this insanity that we are living. We all are going to die. We all just have this opportunity to thrive, to not feel like we are gods, but act like we are gods, to live like we are gods, to change, to learn from our mistakes from the past and then change them in order just to become a better, not person, a better, not individual, a better, not family, a better species and a better planet because we are destroying it and it's insane. So I'm going to go a little bit into the past of humankind because it's really important to understand that there were concepts in all the ancient world that were talking about the same. So this globalization has happened before. Maybe not through the technological advances, but how is possible that all these people who were talking different languages, that were living in different geographical areas of the planet, in different times of the planet, all of them are talking about the same. Where? This has a really easy explanation. And it's that we were harvesting things from the planet since the beginning of times. As someone said, we were hunters, we were collectors, we were 
explorers. We were pioneers. We were people who were trying to conquer themselves and the world with love, with trust, not with fear, not with violence, not with ignorance, not with imposition, but through dialogue. So all these cultures of the past, they left something behind. They left some kind of evidence. And it, this is a universal language because you can find it in Sumeria, you can find it in Babylonia, and you can find it in Mesoamerica. So Professor Graham Hancock, through his research uh, in the archaeological sites all over the world, agreeing with other authors like uh, Baubal, that they discovered that they established, accepted history that we were told simply doesn't match with the evidence and facts and objects that are all over the planet. And this is really ancient, this is really old. I didn't do this. No one that is alive in this moment did any of this, but these people are talking about the same. So, this little handbag that this guy is carrying in his hand is from the Olmec culture from Veracruz, Mexico, and this was done 6,000 years ago. So, through the evidence in the museums, we can track these same presence of these same symbols in other cultures. The fusion between the eagle or the feather or the wings, the, the guys would fly, and the serpent and the jaguar and other symbols that we will be analyzing on the, on the next uh, images. So this is a Mayan pottery. You can see again the back here you can see the same symbol of one X here, that was exactly here. And you can see these three little dots that are in the central eye of this guy, that it's like a jaguar, but it's like a human, and it's also like a monkey because it has also like a tail, right? But you can see other symbols in all this art. Why is it so interesting for me? Because this, for me, is just like reading a book, a comic book, a kid's book. Because through the research and the analysis of these symbols, I conclude that these people were talking about something real. These people weren't talking about their imagination or their beliefs or their expectations. They were talking about their experiences in this life. So. One of the main ingredients of the told medicine that it's 5-MeO-DMT, also it's occurring many other medicines that were used in the past for humans. We have the evidence that people in Tiahuanaco, in Bolivia, were using 4,500 uh, uh, 4, years before Christ. The Jopo uh, from these seeds, from this tree that grows all Central and South America, and they were using these devices to the ritualistic ingestion of the same substance that it's occurred in the toad. <clears throat> because there was no any real alive tradition of the usage of this medicine in recent times. None of the tribes of Mexico or even in the Sonoran Desert remember that this unique species of toad contained this unique property that allows people to feel connected with the oneness. No more ego, no more division. Maybe just for a fraction of time, but you can really feel how this perception that you are apart from the rest is gone. And then you feel like you are one with everything. No one needs to explain you nothing. This is something that is available for everyone and that has been available for everyone since maybe millions of years ago, because we humans appear in this planet just a few hundreds of thousands of years. But these toads have suffered no any change in millions of years, and we don't know if in the past were more than just one species like this in, in the planet. So, the archaeological evidence that exists in the museums here in Europe says that people 
from Americas before the discovery and conquer of the New World were using a substance that was obtained from a frog and it was hallucinogenic and this was found in Mexico in around these years in this area of Mexico that is in the central part of Mexico. So, in the Mayan area, people start to find many mushrooms-headed figures that were buried with toad-shaped sculptures. So, people know, not only in Mexico, but all over the world, the properties of the psychedelic mushrooms. Has been authors who claim that this might be the missed link between ourselves and the rest of the monkeys, that we change our diet, and because our habits change, we also start to change. But it was something also connected with the evolution of our species, and it's the handling of the fire, how pre-humans start to burn things, and then they start to cook the food, and they, they start to smoke things. So people in the past knew that if they, if they eat mushrooms or peyote or many other psychoactive plants, they will have some kind of effect. And this was general culture. This was not only for me. This was for everyone. And not only the medicines, but also the poisons. We know that there is plants that are really toxic and plants that can kill. Uh, a person, but there are also beautiful nectars in this planet. And one of these nectars is occurring in these little glands of this toad from Sonora Desert. This toad contains many parts of glands all over his body, and the medicine is located inside of the gland. We just squeeze the gland, we collect the fluid, we dry the fluid, and we scratch it, and we free the toad. So this medicine is per se, self-sustainable. No one needs to kill any toad, no one needs to wait for this medicine to be produced, no one needs to manufacture the medicine. The medicine is already there. And the people in the past knew it, and they left the evidence, the evidence behind. How? Through art, through symbolism. You can see that the gland of the toad is full with those, these little dots. I marked the gland on uh, a more colorful green so you can see the size of this gland. The gland contains all these little dots all over the skin, that that's the, 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 the place where the medicine is coming from. So, you see the gland, you see the little dots, and now you will see this Mayan plate that is showing the same symbol exactly located in the gland of a toad. And this Mayan art was repeated for 3,000 years, at least, in Mesoamerica. You can see the same pattern here, here, yeah? Here, 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 toad, 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 fish, 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 snake, jaguar. What that means? Well, you remember the three dots that I told you inside of the eye of the jaguar? You can see the three dots exactly located in the gland of the toad. Not only one, but over and over and over again. And you can see that this toad is giving a hand and an eye in a turtle shell. From there, there is this strange symbol, like it's like an om. And then the cosmic serpent and you can see that the guy who is coming from the mouth of the serpent has a device on his hands that contains the three little dots that are located in the gland of the toad. So this guy is blowing or smoking or inhaling something from this device. And after this, you can see the jaguar, that is the king of the jungle. You can see the claw of the eagle exactly in the top of the head of the snake and in the top of the head of the human because of the flight. Now, 
You can see people flying. You can see people upside down. You can see toad, you can see three little dolls, you can see this guy that it's kind of taking something from the toad, and then you have all these spirals, again the jaguar, toad, again someone sucking something from the gland. This might be the meat of the toad being licked. And exactly after that, again the vision. You have a deer, because these people also knew that from the dung of the deer, the psychedelic mushrooms will grow. So these people weren't ignorant, and for sure, also not barbarians, because through the anthropological research with the tribes that were never conquered, these tribes don't have any memory of human sacrifices. All these tribes from the America, they don't kill themselves, and some of them were having first contact with Western world at the beginning of the last century. So where all these myths about these people being inferior and being crazy and being demoniac and being satanic came from, I think that is really easy. It's to try to justify the annihilation of a culture to explode the natural resources like we are doing today in our days, still. So this is a toad that is squeezing himself the gland with the three little dots. And you can see again the toad jaguar, the fish, and the guys who clearly are smoking something. You can see in this other building that, well, this other uh, draw that is made from a building that is in uh, Campeche in Mexico, it's the Four Kings building, and it's four toads, and from the mouth of the toad, with the same symbols that we were seeing over and over again, it's a guy that has these two hands, not pound, but, pound, but inverted. And this is one of the reactions that people has automatically after ingesting the Sonoran Desert Toad secretion. You can see that this guy also has something in his ears, like the toad here, and like the first guy that I show you, I'm sorry, I'm going back, 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 back. the disc on the head. So this proves that this handbag is connected also with the toad. Why? Because they are showing it over and over and over again. In 2006, they found in Mexico this huge sculpture that is called the Mother Earth Goddess Toad for the Aztecs. So when I went to see this piece that was exhibited for the first time in 2012, I couldn't believe what I was seeing, because you can see the hair of the Tlaltecutli, you can see the same discs, and you can see this Aztec figure that was uh, built around 1500, with this Mayan uh, uh, building that was done a thousand years before with this other building in Teotihuacan, Mexico, who contained the same symbol from the Toltec culture. Three different cultures, three different languages, 3,000 years on the between all these cultures from the Olmecs to the Aztecs, and all of them are talking about the same symbol. For me, it's interesting. The symbol is interesting. But more interesting than the symbol is the presence of the toad in all these places. This is the main step to the main temple of the Aztecs. And you can see two Quetzalcoatl, or feather serpents, guarded by two toads. So the goal of the ball game for all these people we're about crossing a little ball through here. And you can see, again, 
the toad and the symbol that these people were showing over and over again. In pottery, in murals, and other murals, more stones, pipes. This is a pipe collection that was uh, located in Ohio and Mississippi in the United States. Uh, around, uh, what they were made around the year 1100. So this means that some people were smoking something inside of some pipes that are with the shape of a toad in the southwest of the United States 400 years before the discovery of the New World. And the toad medicine is not, not the only, is not the only amphibian known to have medicinal properties. We also have the frog, the giant monkey frog from the Amazonia's rainforest that is Cambo, or Philomedusa um, by color, by, uh, by, uh, that's the scientific name. So, these two amphibians, one that lives in the jungle, in the top of the trees, and other toad that lives in the desert, buried under the ground 10 months every year, both of them contain some valuable thing that still being used by so many people in the jungle, and that now is being used again for some of the tribes of the desert. Because when I sh shared this medicine with the Seri tribe in 2011, trying mainly the crystal meth addiction among the, the, the population of the tribe with a high rate of success, that's why the elders of the community not only support my work, they also show me the ancient chants, the sacred chants that these people were using for healing in recent times without the medicine. Some people think that I'm trying to create a connection between the cultures from the past and the present, only for me to have a reason for doing this, but it's beyond that. It's not me. It's not my intellect. I am surprised to be able to see all these things happening and that this was not done by my will. I was shown by the nature that I needed to walk this path in order to free myself of all the prisons that I created with my education and to help other people to do the same by themselves because this is self-healing process and no one has authority over anyone else. That means that I am not a shaman, that I am not a healer. I'm a physician and I am doing a work trying to rescue a culture that was buried in the past. Why? Because of our ambitions and because of the greedy of the people of the past and the people of the present. We're still connecting. And if we really want to have a better future, we need to start to change in actions today based on what happened yesterday. In 2013, the next tribe that lives in, in the Sonora Desert, the Yaqui tribe, asked the, my intervention. So I went also with the Yaqui tribe, but this tribe are 45,000 people. The Seri tribe are only 2,000 people. So I could go there and spend five months there and helping to clean in their community, to educate people about Stop drinking so many pop soda. You are killing yourself. Stop eating junk food. Stop, start doing exercise. Please take care of yourself and your children and the example that you are giving to the rest of the people. And they get the message. Because what I'm saying is nothing new. These are the Mayan codexes of people, obviously, this is not a flute. This guy is smoking something. You can see the same symbol here. You can see the fire. You can see the X. And you can see the toad. You can see the symbol. You can see the rain. So the idea and concept of the center of the world was among all these people, and it was not something outside of us. 
The center of the universe lives inside of each of our hearts. Every single human being, every single being that exists in this world, we all are connected, we all are one. And people from the past knew this. And they left uh, buildings, they left legends, they left chants, and we are now trying to put all these little pieces together because this is me 12 years ago. And this is me now. Thanks to Tom Ellison. So, I'm trying to create sanctuaries to protect these species and the rest of the species with therapeutic and sacred value for humans for the next generations. And this, I cannot do it alone. I've been sharing this medicine with around 8,000 people in 37 countries. And I could still do that the rest of my life, and it will be endless. And you know what? I don't want to do it. It's too much for me. I need help. I need help. So the help that I needed really came. There is a cosmic, conscious intelligence. There is a design that is in my life. A prueba de errores. There is no way that nature can cheat on us because we are nature. Without our planet, without clean water, without clean food, without less stress, we all are doomed. Forever. Thank you very much.